So I want to walk you through a Fischer sterification mechanism. Uh, basically, we're going to take a carboxylic acid, we're going to take an alcohol, and we're going to combine the two. And what we do, we're going to lose a water molecule. Um, this is going to be acid catalyzed, and I want to walk you through the curly arrow mechanism for kind of how this works. Now, the very first step of this is that our carbonyl group here is going to form a bond with the H plus there. Okay? And so, and so that's going to initiate a reaction. It's going to form this instead of the carb carboxylic acid. It's going to kind of form a really weird looking intermediate. Now, that's got a positive charge on that oxygen there, which is not good, but uh, there is some resonance where these two electrons or these two electrons can pop down to here, form a double bond, and those can kick out. And so that positive charge really is being shared equally over those two oxygens. And there is a third resonance structure where we could form the positive charge and form a carbocation. Uh, so, so this is not the worst thing in the world. And then what's going to happen next is this, this carbon then is very positively charged, it's very electrophilic. And so these electrons there will come in and they will collide with that carbon hopefully, and then they will form a bond between that. Okay? And that's kind of the initiation of our reaction here. So after that what we'll have is we'll have our methyl group onto the carbon, and that's going to kick out that double bond so that we have all single bonds. Okay? And so we're going to have our first alcohol group, our second alcohol group, and then now we're going to have our benzene alcohol attached, and now we're kind of seeing the formation of the ether uh, right there. And so, so now our positive charge is actually down here on that oxygen. And so, so the next thing that's going to happen is this has to get deprotonated. Now, at this point in the reaction, this could leave. So it's not, it's not atypical for that to just go at this point, and then, and then we'll have to restart the reaction. But if the reaction is going to go to completion, the next thing that's going to happen is a base is going to come along, take that hydrogen, the H+, the electrons will remain with the oxygen. Okay. And at that point, we kind of equalize the three. So now we have our CH3, COH, COH, and CO with the final group attached. So the next thing that we want to happen, if this is going to go, is we need one of those two hydroxyl groups to pick up an H plus from something. So let's say that we end up forming a bond between that and the H plus. Okay, what that's going to do is that's going to essentially make us a water molecule that's going to be much better at leaving than a hydroxyl group. And so now we have our positive charge back on here. And that makes that a much better leaving group. And at that point, then, this can just leave. And then these electrons will come in and form that double bond again. And that sets us up to be very close to our product. Now we'll have CH3, C double bond O with an H attached still. And then we will have our benzene ring attached here. Okay, so now we have a positive charge here. We need our base again, but our base is going to come along and it's going to form a bond with that. Those electrons are going to stay with the oxygen, and that will be our final product. Where we have CH3, C double bond O, O, benzene. So here is our ester. And then along the way here, we remove the water molecule, so that is also a product. So it's a, it's a dehydration reaction or a condensation reaction uh, where we end up with an ester and water. And 
one of the things that should be clear from this is that really there's not a huge difference between those three groups and so while this is going on we're perpetually going back to our initial state where we have the carboxylic acid and even once you form the ester it's not the most permanent of compounds this can easily hydrolyze and react with water to go back to forming the carboxylic acid and the alcohol uh, a good example of that is if you have aspirin aspirin is an ester acetyl salicylic acid and if you allow water into your, into your uh, aspirin container over time it's going to hydrolyze and the, the carboxylic acid produced in that is actually this, it's eth ethanoic acid so if you have an old aspirin bottle and you smell it, it will smell like vinegar because of the ethanoic acid that's being produced over time, especially if it's old.